Well, I've always wanted to be uh, backstage for an awards, and uh, that's where you find uh, both Chris Johnson and myself after the NHL awards and expansion draft has been completed. Let's concentrate on the draft, and I, I think people figured that Marc Andre Fleur would get selected by the Vegas Golden Knights, but then when he's selected and he gets that kind of reaction, it almost kind of uh, makes you think, wow, they, they've got a franchise and they got a three-time Stanley Cup winner to backstop them in their first season. A real memorable moment from the night, actually, is seeing him walk out from behind the stage it, it, wearing the, the new jersey that was just unveiled yesterday. Uh, you have the, the building full, a lot of energy, a huge roar. And you're right, it gives them a face of the franchise. And uh, I think it's fair to say Marc-Andre Fleury will begin that way uh, with this team. He won't be the captain or anything like that, though there'll be other players that assume that mantle. But uh, he means a lot to them, and let's face it, based on the roster they drafted, they're going to need some help in net, and Marc-Andre Fleury is coming off an excellent playoffs with the Pittsburgh Penguins, and you know I think can be a difference maker between whether this team is competitive or not to, in their inaugural season. Well, let's move to James Neal, and then you can segue into whatever you want, because uh, you had a chance to really sort of dissect this expansion draft heading into it. Uh, getting Neal uh, two thumbs up, and what did you think of the way the 30 selections went for Vegas? Neil hurts the National Predators. There, there was clearly some discussions between David Poyle and George McPhee. In fact, every day this week, I'm told, they, they talked, and David Poyle was attempting to make one of the trades to, to keep Vegas from taking Neil, but felt that the price uh, was going to be too much. And James Neal is the most dynamic scorer, certainly, that Vegas is starting with as we're sitting here right now. I uh, still expect a bunch of trades to come. Uh, here, so so maybe some moving parts still for the Golden Knights, but he's a real coup. He's heading into his free agent season, his last year under contract, so he can be moved again potentially at the trade deadline for future assets for Vegas, but also gives them that star power and scoring on the wing. And you know, I think it's a little bit more uh, when Vegas started this, and they thought they would get. What about the defensemen? Uh, George McPhee said he, heading into it said we're going to have a lot of defensemen. What do they they do with that, and how do they maneuver these uh, potential picks? Because they've got, they've got a lot of everything it seems, especially when it comes to picks as well as blue line. 13 defensemen taken in the expansion draft. So all those guys shouldn't start shopping for housing just yet. <laughs> uh, clearly those are the types of players that will now be flipped as soon as Thursday morning. I'm told that there are trades lined up. Nothing's been completed in terms of a trade call with the league. But at 8 a.m. Eastern time on Thursday, those conversations will start happening. Probably see some more uh, picks added to Vegas. And I think what's really impressive and clearly their strategy here is they're walking away with 12 picks in Friday's and Saturday's draft this weekend, three of them in the top 15 as we're talking right now, and clearly that's how they're going to build the foundation of this team over time is adding high-level prospects uh, in the 17 draft, but also 18, 19, and even a 2020 pick acquired in this process. Well, I'm glad he explained that, and I didn't. Chris, a great job in Las Vegas over the last few days. Uh, enjoy the draft. Uh, for Chris Johnson, I'm Team Prince Bay in Las Vegas for Sportsnet.